Hello, I'm Cecil Atchison. Going to be doing some uh, Advent lessons for uh, the season of Advent. Let's, uh, let's pray. Lord, we uh, pray that you would uh, help us to worship you in spirit and truth. Help us, Lord, uh, during this season of Advent to uh, focus our attention on what's really important. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The cr Christmas tradition in the church that I really love is called Advent. January 1st is the uh, uh, date of the new year on our calendars. But Advent is actually the beginning of the new year in the church. The word Advent comes from a couple of Latin words that means to come towards, come near, to approach. What, one of the ways that we celebrate the birth of our Savior is uh, uh, during the Advent season, uh, the tradition is uh, we uh, light Advent candles. We have an Advent wreath. Uh, we have four Advent candles for each Sunday in Advent, and then we have the Christ candle. Each of the four Sundays before Christmas Day, we, we celebrate through four themes. Hope, peace, joy, and love. The Advent wreath includes many symbols to help us think about Christ and His gifts to us. The, the wreath itself is a circle. A circle has no beginning and no end. That reminds us of God's love for us, that it has no end. The light from the candles during Advent grows stronger each Sunday because we light first the, the candle of hope, then we'll light the candle of uh, peace, then joy, then love. So as, as we proceed through the season of Advent, the light from each candle together grows. And that reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. During the season of Advent, we remember and celebrate God drawing near to us in Christ as a helpless babe at Bethlehem. We, we remember too that, that Christ draws near to us through the Holy Spirit and the present. And the third thing is, we, we celebrate that Jesus is coming back in, in all of his glory. He drew near to us in the past. He, he's with us now. And he'll be with us in the future. And when he, when he returns and redemption is complete. Today's Advent theme is hope. Our hope is in the second Advent, the second coming of Jesus. We didn't come here to stay. When, when Jesus comes again, He will fully redeem everything, both the spiritual and the natural. Everything will be redeemed. Jesus Christ came the first time to set humans free from the power of sin. When Jesus comes again, He will set human beings free from the effects of sin. Full redemption is the Christian hope. I'm going to read to you some scripture. This is from Mark chapter 13. I'm going to read verses 24 
through uh, 27, and then 32 through 37. This is known as the Olivet Discourse, since it occurred on the Mount of Olives. Hear what Jesus says in Mark chapter 13. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth and the ends of heaven. But about that day, or that hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands a doorkeeper, to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, at midnight, or at the cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Has anybody ever said to you, take care? I'm sure they have. You, you've probably said that to your, your, yourself. I know I've said that myself. I've said it lots of times. Around here, that's sort of like saying goodbye. And we say take care without really even giving it much thought. But take care can also mean Watch out. When Jesus says, take care, that's really what he means. He means, watch out. Stay alert. Listen up. Heed. Pay attention. If, if you've ever daydreamed in school, the teacher may, to, may have said to you, wake up. In this passage in Mark's Gospel, the Lord is telling us exactly that. Wake up. Here Jesus gives his last discourse to the disciples only hours before he, were to, he was to go to the cross. Jesus spoke to the disciples as they walked on uh, the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is uh, across the, uh, the Kidron Valley uh, facing the great temple in Jerusalem. It's not a stretch to think of his words, the words of Jesus that he spoke to his disciples as his last will and testament. Jesus tells his disciples, take care, keep awake. Jesus is leaving, but he will be coming back to earth. There will be a second coming for him. And it will be an earth-shaking event. His coming again will occur at an undetermined time. After his death and resurrection and ascension. He promises that he will return as a son of man coming in the clouds. Coming in the clouds with great glory and great power. To gather all of his people from the ends of the earth. At that time, the whole earth will be redeemed. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Full redemption. The, the whole world will be redeemed from the effects of sin. But, there is a danger. The danger is that people will miss what really matters. We could be distracted by the many and assorted demands on our time as we live day by day. Jesus says to them, 
Take care and keep awake. Stay focused. We face the same challenge as we enter the season of Advent. This year, there may not be the stampede to the store on Black Friday. Likely, the stampede will be an online stampede. The Christmas activities this year may be a, a bit less strenuous and a bit more muted. But that could be a good thing. Maybe a quieter Christmas is something we need so that we can reflect upon the great spiritual blessings that we have at Christmas. The great expression of Christian hope is in the return of Christ. Our hope is that God in Christ will put everything right. Everything will be made right. We can Jesus can return at any moment. He can return at any moment. He can return in the powerful and glorious way that is promised of His second coming. It could happen any time. And we pray in the church, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But even if He doesn't come in an earth-shaking earth event. His, his coming, His second coming, may not occur, may not be an event during our lifetimes. But even then, He still comes. He comes today. He knocks on the door of every human heart. He comes to each human life here and now. And when this life ends. That coming into each human life may not be as dramatic as what's promised when he comes, when Jesus returns in the clouds with great power and glory. But his coming into the human heart is every bit as significant to each individual. Do you like uh, love songs? Men usually won't admit they love love songs or like love songs. But I admit I like a good love song. In Advent, we recall the goodness of God and His love. Jesus sings to us. He sings His song of eternal life to us. Listen to this story about a love song. Like any good mother, when Karen found out that she was pregnant, that the baby was on the way, she did what she could to help her three-year-old to adjust to that idea and, and prepare for the uh, new sibling. They found out that the uh, new baby was going to be a girl. And day and night, little Michael, three-year-old Michael, would sing to uh, the baby girl in his mother's tongue. The pregnancy seemed to progress normally for Karen, an active member of the Panther Creek Church in uh, Morristown, Tennessee. But complications arose during, during the delivery, and finally, a C-section had to be administered. The baby is born alive, but in a serious condition. An ambulance with howling sirens rushed the baby girl to the much better equipped neonatal intensive care unit at St. Mary's Hospital in Knoxville. Days pass by, but the little girl doesn't get any better. 
The specialists tell the parents that they better prepare for the worst. So Karen and her husband contact uh, a local uh, mortuary about uh, getting a, a burial plot. They had fixed up a special room for their baby girl in their home, but now they're planning a funeral. Meanwhile, little Michael keeps begging. He keeps begging his parents to let him see his sister. He says, I want to sing to her. Week two slips by, and it looks as if a funeral will come before the week is over. Michael keeps nagging. He wants to sing to his sister, but little children are forbidden from going to ICU. Finally, Karen makes up her mind. She takes Michael and puts him in one of those oversized scrub suits and uh, takes him down to the uh, ICU. If he doesn't see his sister now, he may never see her alive. When the head nurse sees, sees him, she bellows, get that child out of here! No children are allowed! But the usually mild-mannered Karen stares right back and says, he is not leaving until he sees his sister. So Karen takes Michael to where his little sister lay. He gazes at the tiny infant losing her battle for life. And then he begins to sing. In the voice of a three-year-old, Michael sings, You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Instantly, the little baby responds. The pulse rate becomes calm and steady. Michael keeps singing. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. The ragged, strained breathing becomes as smooth as a kitten's purr. Michael keeps singing. Tears conquer the face of the head nurse, and Karen glows. You are my sunshine. My only sunshine, please don't take my sunshine away. Funeral plans are scrapped. The next day, the very next day, the little girl goes home with her parents. Women's Day magazine called it the miracle of the brother's song. The medical staff just called it a miracle. Karen called it a miracle of God's grace. It isn't the tenderness of a brother's love, something that's really beautiful. As beautiful and tender as that, God's loving grace for us is even more tender and sublime. We were infants that lay dying. God sang a love song to us through the cross of Christ. Jesus still sings to us today through the cross and through the scriptures. He sings to us words of eternal life. Heaven and earth will pass away, says Jesus, but my words will not pass away. The shape of our hope is Jesus. Romans 5.5 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our lives. 
He's coming to gather all people into his community from all the ends of the earth. From the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. He'll be coming, though, to see if we're ready. To see if we're alert. Will we, will we be living in a way that is focused on his purposes? Will we? Christ challenges us to keep awake, to take care, take heed. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, awaken all the more for the coming of the Lord Jesus during Advent season. So how do we do this? What do we do to take care? Well, we begin by listening carefully to the words of our Savior. It's not easy. It's not easy to hear the words of Jesus with all the distractions and noise of this world. Jesus' words of radical redemption are Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Receive Jesus with childlike faith. In a very few words, that's really what Advent is all about. It's also important for us to remain connected to the community that Jesus intends to gather when he returns. The, the community that stretches to the ends of the earth. Christian faith is not, Christian faith is a team sport. It's not an individual activity. So it's critically important for us to continue to worship, to serve, and to fellowship. How we do that this year will be a critical and a great challenge. But Jesus wants us to remain connected in community. He wants us to be like that for when he returns. That's how we stay awake. As we gather together in worship and service and in fellowship. You do not know when the master of the house will come, he predicts in the evening or at midnight or at dawn. Remain connected in community. That's the best position to be in if you want to meet Jesus. Finally, it's important for us to be alert and to be ready for His arrival. We, we do that when we live in ways that are in line with God's will in Christ. You've heard this. You've heard this before. Live every day as though it's your last one. What this means is doing our best to trust Jesus and to love God and neighbor. The fact is, we don't know when our lives are going to end. Just as we don't know the timing of the second coming. The best approach is to be alert to Christ's will, living each day with faith and love in a spirit of service. What I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. 
These words are the last recorded words of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. And like a message in a bottle that has traveled through the centuries, the words of Jesus remind us of what really matters. Receive Jesus with childlike faith. Stay connected in Christian community. And live every day as though it were your last day on earth. In line with Christ's purposes. Life, this life is not all there is. The earth is not our home. Our hope is for something else, something more, a better, more wonderful, far off place. We look beyond the pain of this broken world to the place where there is no more tears. We look for full redemption. I'm going to read to you Revelation 21, verse 3. Now the dwelling place of God is with men, and he will live with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear. From, from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Hallelujah. Everything will be made new. We are not a people of a human lifetime, but we are people who live forever. Advent. Advent begins a season of hope. As a Christian, I'm a prisoner of hope. Have you been taken captive? Have you? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we thank you that you came as a helpless babe to Bethlehem all those years ago. You, you came to bring redemption the salvation of our souls. And at your second coming, you'll be bring full redemption. All the effects of sin will be wiped away. And we'll be with you forever. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.